Hello my lovelies and welcome to another vlog. Well, is it gonna be a vlog? It's more of a sort of a hybrid of a vlog and a sit down video, I suppose. I've been actually meaning to do something like this for a while because you guys have asked for it. So I always try to listen to all of your requests. I always read the comments and try to kind of like engage as much as possible with you a lot because I feel like that is the full purpose of this channel. If I receive a lot of comments about a certain topic, then of course I want to answer to it. And lately I've been getting a lot of questions on how I style my hair when I actually style it to achieve this kind of like a voluminous, slightly wavy look, I would say, how I look after my hair, all the supplements that I'm taking. And I don't think I've filmed a video on that topic for approximately three years. I think the last time that I filmed a video on my kind of like a hair topic was I had like black hair, no fringe. It was completely different look. So I do believe that it's about the time that I do this video. Anyway, that being said, I am going to try and make this video a mix of everything. I will show you how I take care of my hair what kind of like products i use how i style my hair what supplements well supplements is a little bit more complex topic but i'll touch upon it and i in general wanted to talk a little bit more about taking care of myself what i do how i do it and all of that good stuff in case you like these kind of like self-care videos make sure to like subscribe to bookmark to comment like and all the good stuff because i think it could be useful i mean i'll try my best to give you all the best tips and not to gatekeep okay so let's go to my bathroom and start the hair prep. Okay, so first things first, we're gonna start with hair prep. I think hair prep is extremely important because you get to actually give your hair all that, what would I call it? Like necessary nourishing in order to be able to kind of like thrive and get all the things that you're giving it. Sometimes like just masking and using your conditioner is not enough because the product that you're trying to apply is not reaching the follicle, is not like being boosted. If you're taking supplements, but you don't notice any difference in your hair, it's maybe because the circulation on your scalp is not quite boosted. You need to kind of take care of your hair from top to the bottom and from inside as well as the outside. So let me show you how I prep my hair before I wash it. And I'm gonna remove this towel because, you know, the aesthetic is important on this channel. First thing, we're gonna comb through my hair or more like brush through it. I'm using this Dyson brush. I've had this for probably like four or five years. I really love it. What I usually try to do when I first comb is hold onto the hair here so I'm not pulling it from the root or like breaking it while I'm combing the bottom part of it. So I detangle these parts with not breaking too much. Then I do this and then we go to the root. I think like brushing your hair before you wash it is very important because you make sure to remove any tangles and obviously you help product penetrate better throughout the strands and glide and all of that very important stuff. So that's the first step. The second step is sort of like a product application. Now, I actually believe in looking after your scalp as much as looking after your hair. So today we're gonna first start with the scalp serum. I don't have just one scalp serum, I swear by it. I have a few here with me. One is from Vegamore, the other one is by Sisley. And the truth is that I always apply this product first because it's very liquidy. I kind of just stick the nozzle, the pipette, throughout my hair and focus on important parts, but don't forget the bottom. Very important as well, especially for me. At the moment, I have a lot of like shorter hair bits at the back because I started like getting a lot of new hair. To be honest, I'm gonna mix both serums right now. This one is a little bit thicker, which is why I'm applying it second, but they're approximately similar consistency and viscosity. Oh, sometimes it drops on my face, which annoys me but you know you have to reach all the bits also in the front and that's it okay so it's not just enough to apply the product because you need to feel your scalp and you need to make sure that it's actually absorbing very important thing is actually massaging your scalp and the more you can massage your scalp throughout the week and between the washes the more nourishing you will get from your bloodstream of nourishing derivatives like nourishing substances to your follicle and also like from the product that you actually apply on the scalp into your skin so i normally have done this always with my hands what i would do is just like what the hairdresser tends to do is this and this 
the more you do it the more you are actually bringing the circulation and the blood to this part of your head now i actually purchased recently a brush for your head and i got this in korea i quite like it because it sits in my head quite nicely and now i love to do this oh it feels so good i can feel that my head and my scalp is more painful it's because it probably i never actually get to move i have a lot of hair okay and i never actually get to move the hair from one side to the other it always sits in the same direction so when i actually move the root a little bit i notice how good it feels now a little background on my hair structure and type i have naturally curly hair thick and coarse very coarse which is why it's extremely important what kind of product i use and not just the product but even more important the tools i use to style it after i wash it the fact that it's curly means that it's naturally dry curly hair will never look as hydrated or actually oily or greasy probably either which is good part of it but i'm not a huge fan of the fact that obviously it's dry and it tends to grow a little bit slower now that we've done this okay i can feel actually the skin of my head tingling a little bit but not in a bad way more like kind of like the feeling that you have when you apply the foot cream on your feet a little bit cooling and it's because we're getting the blood circulation moving ah oh, this feels so good okay okay done now very important part i'm actually going to dampen my hair usually i do this with a little spray bottle so you can just get like any spray bottle that you possibly have or you can just use water sink and all that stuff i'm gonna have to remove the microphone for this otherwise it's gonna get wet now the hair is just dampened it's not wet you can see like there's no dripping anywhere and i'm gonna use olaplex number three most of the products that i use are kerastas olaplex and few maybe sisley or oribe i don't know but there's not really that huge of a variety of products i use i tend to change from time to time if i feel like my hair gets sick of a product but in general you always know what i'm using now i have a lot of hair like i said so i'm gonna try and distribute this relatively evenly especially towards the bottom of the hair and then i'm gonna comb through i received this gift a comb as a gift from a lovely lady that gave it to me it's from a brand called blab hair and i think it's quite pretty because it's great for combing through wet hair because you don't want to pull any hair strands so that's what we're doing we're just giving it as much love as possible and i'm gonna go a little bit crazy because i feel like i've been traveling i'm traveling i'm getting my hair styled a lot i think my hair needs a lot of love and a good olaplex treatment this is number three by the way so this is what we're doing now sometimes i would actually go for zero and then number three then wash and rinse and all of that good stuff but today we're doing a bit of a quicker thing because i have actually an appointment in an hour like a zoom call so we're not gonna take too long of time but i will be using my dyson air wrap which actually saves me so much time and money and i am gonna show you how i style my hair so we'll for sure be ready what's gonna take the longest is actually keeping this in my hair so comb once again Sometimes I also apply it in the front of my hair just because I style my fringe a lot, but not too much on the roots. This is it, you guys. Now we're gonna put it back. Like I said, the hair is not wet, it's not dripping. It's more just damp. I put it up very often. I put it in a towel so that it can get like warm. You can put in a shower cap and a towel even better. So you get a bit of a system that will make sure that the product penetrates even better. Now let's wait and I'll be right back. Okay, guys, it has almost like, I won't say dry, but it's obviously been a little while. Preheating my shower, I know that it needs a preheat, but I like when it gets steamy in there. So I'm gonna jump in, do a shampoo, do a nice little mask and then we're gonna get straight to styling. I'm bringing this to the shower. Okay, let's get on to this part. 
After I wash out the Olaplex, I go in with the first round of shampoo. I usually start this with warm water mainly because I just really enjoy the hot water, but it's not necessarily good for your skin or your hair. After the first round of shampoo, which is usually either Kerastase or another one I'm using, it's a 10 on this occasion, I then do another round of shampoo just to make sure that all the Olaplex and all the product that I use for styling before is out. After shampooing, I remove the excess water from my hair and I go with a round of mask. I make sure that I comb through hair very gently because wet hair is quite sensitive. So I just comb very gently. I try to divide it in different parts so I can reach the most unreachable parts of my hair and spread evenly the mask. I leave it to sit in for around three to five minutes while I do all the other stuff in the shower and then thoroughly rinse it. I make sure that all of it is out and I finish using cold water. Brr! Probably most of you already know that the Dyson Airwrap is available in different colors. I'll insert also a picture of other colorways that it comes in just because of course girls need and guys need to have our options, right? So without further ado, I'm gonna show you how I style my hair. I wanted to say that what makes this styler so special, this Dyson Airwrap uses V9 motor and it does not use heat but air to style your hair, which means that there is no heat damage and that is very important. Now, something extremely important, especially if you have a lot of hair, but I think in any possible case is dividing your hair. Well, I usually divide my hair in like sort of like three floors, I say. And then the rest I put up with a little clip. I actually have another one from the same lady that's given me the comb. It's quite cute. Put this up here. So after we've divided the hair, it's like slightly almost dry now, which I find it the best way when styling it. I'm gonna use the barrel. This is what I've been doing lately. Obviously I do tend to change how I style my hair depending on the mood, etc. And I'm not gonna be able to talk through this because even though it's pretty quiet, I do feel like with the microphone, it's not gonna be possible. So we are going to do a little voiceover. This is the Dyson Airwrap. It can curl, shape, smooth and hide flyaways with no extreme heat. Inside of the storage case, you will find the Dyson Airwrap multi-styler, Conda smoothing dryer, 30 millimeter barrel, 40 millimeter barrel, soft smoothing brush, firm smoothing brush, round volumizing brush, storage case, and filter cleaning brush as well. Now let's get into the styling. After I've divided the hair into sections, I dried it a little bit with a towel, but you can also achieve like smooth finish using the smoothing brush attachment. I'm starting with a 40 millimeter barrel to create this soft wave. As you can see, it's very easy to achieve the curl. What's really important is that you can change the direction of airflow to the other side so that no side looks kind of repetitive. You can basically go from section to section, changing the airflow, getting these curls pointing out of your face or towards your face, whatever you like. I always make sure to comb hair through, apply heat protection, and then keep adding curls on and on one after another. What's really nice about the Dyson Airwrap is that because it doesn't use too much heat, I can go over the same strand over and over until I've achieved the desired look. Lately, you've probably noticed that I'm a big fan of this like voluminous curl, not like something that's too defined, though you can achieve with Dyson whatever look you fancy. Okay guys, so here is the final result of what my hair looks like. I kind of feel like I'm stepping away a little bit from that like curl, curl, curl and I'm going more towards this type of like a voluminous look that I really appreciate and I like and I feel like it's more also like maybe suitable for my style. I hope you can see me because I'm not sure how the light is now that we've changed almost from day to night. It's been exactly an hour since I went in to wash my hair to when I came out ready, fully ready. So this is the look. What I've done is sort of like I dried it a little bit, styled it, and then when I wanted to add an extra curl, like for example, for me, fringe is my most important part, which you can see here in the front. And if I want to add a little bit more 
curl in the front, that's what I add and that for me changes a lot my look. Now a lot of you are asking me like does this stay because you're wondering if the curl done with Dyson Airwrap actually stays for the whole day. For me, it stays for five days really. But I think what's very important is prepping your hair, like the product that you use at the beginning. Like for me, I use this, I use the antifreeze, I use, it depends. Like sometimes I would put like a little bit of mousse or a little bit of hairspray, depending. And what I like to do is like, I often play with my hair throughout the week, day, year, whatever it is. So. It's just like these curls, they fall however they kind of like. What happens is like after a few days, they kind of come together, especially because I tend to do each side one direction. So sometimes they would come, the curl would come together and then I just comb it through throughout the week to kind of get back in the volume. That's basically how I style my hair. As you can see, for someone who has very coarse and frizzy hair, I think like it looks very shiny and smooth. And I mean, it's incredible for me that this is what we managed to get from wet to dry with this kind of just one tool and especially the amount of volume that we have. Another thing is like sometimes if I'm like, cause my hair doesn't get greasy. If I want to touch up a curl, I would just like tiny bit dampen it. Is that word? <laughs> yeah, I guess so. And then I would just like go like two times in like the front pieces and it will look like I've just washed it, which is great touch up method. So this is it. Now I'm going to put a little tiny bit of oil on my ends and a bit of spray and we're ready for the next five days at least. Good morning guys. I woke up, I did my makeup, I'm in pajamas. As you can see, I'm gonna change that quickly so that I can fill you in on all the remaining part of my hair journey that I wanted to share with you. So quick change, but wanted to show you as well the hair today. So kind of what it looks like. Like remember what I told you, sometimes the curls then tend to come together and I would just like comb through, juice it up. Do something like this, put your hair down, and then this, and it's like a different look altogether, basically. So, yeah, gonna change, and I'm gonna tell you all about now internal care that I give to my hair. Okay, guys, so here we are. Where do I even start? I actually have filmed a video in the past about growing my lashes and brows, and I would say that probably like same rules do apply for your hair. I think Philip was talking to me. I don't think he got the memo that I'm filming a video. I would say that one extremely important thing is obviously your diet, but like we don't need to fool ourselves. It's very difficult to kind of maintain a diet rich with nutrients, especially with like busy lifestyles. And perhaps it's not it shouldn't be difficult. Perhaps that's like the most important thing for everything, not just for our hair and skin and nails. But I think that there's one thing that I don't want to think about. I don't want to think about the right amount of vitamin B or other kind of nutrients that I know I need to look and feel my best while traveling, for example. Like I don't really know like what kind of food I'm getting, right? So or what I'm gonna be eating. And also when I'm traveling and when I'm tired and when I'm jet lagged, I'm craving not the healthiest food. So I always make sure that I have my supplements. I've been getting so many questions about my supplements. And the thing is that I wish now I could have like a box of supplements and say like, this is what I take, go buy this. Like I'm always like that. You guys know that that's what I'm about. But the thing is that I actually mix a lot of different things and I mix my own, like even like powders. I used to like, when I lived in Paris, I used to go to the Galerie Lafayette on Champs-Élysées and get like a lot of different kind of like supplement powders and I would mix them. And I filmed that and I have logged that and I've shown you guys how I do it. I would mix like different kind of powders. I would read what they have, obviously. For you guys who might be new to this channel, I'm a pharmacist. So I do know kind of like how to mix and what you can mix. There's a little bit of like science behind this. There's really no way you can overdose on vitamins besides vitamins k a d and e so those are the like fat soluble vitamins that you only can take and should take the recommended daily dose but then i would like take or try to take as much as possible of vitamins like b c you know like all the vitamins that i believe are quite good for me but it's very important also for your skin and hair to have the right amount of vitamin D and vitamin E. I, for years, I've been taking like Barocca, I was taking like different vitamins that I take together in combination. I take digestion supplements as well because a lot of you know that I have IBS or I suffered with IBS. Now it's gotten much better. Mixed with like 
probiotics etc and I have my own like right recipe that I do maybe like I can kind of try and gather everything and all the information and structure a vitamin video just around this if you guys would like to see this but for now that's one thing that I would like to say that it's very important for me the vitamin that I really believe in when it comes to the hair growth and in general lashes and brows and skin would be like vitamin b7 but i always take it with vitamin b5 like both those vitamins in the day because i think it's quite important just because they get metabolized in the same way so if you take one you also need to take the other one in order to not miss out on absorption of one or the other it's getting a little bit complex but anyway that's something that i think is very important but i don't take i take them as like a complex and i take this very very seriously i want to give you a little glimpse of my lashes and eyebrows like now here you can see that's all the part of the same game okay? Okay, so lashes and eyebrows, I've done like a whole video on it and I also spoken about another thing in that video. The other thing that I've spoken about in that video is the castor oil. Now at the beginning of this video I've shown you that I use serums for hair like specifically to massage the scalp with them and the other thing that you can definitely massage your hair with or scalp but I will do this night before the wash would be the castor oil. I only recommend the cold pressed castor oil because I think it's really good. It's good for your lashes, good for your brows and for your hair. I've noticed on TikTok there's a huge trend about rosemary oil. I have never tried it. I would like to do a research i'm gonna check all the like sort of like scientific papers when it comes to rosemary oil also like one thing to know is that at university in my final year you can choose two subjects that you want to kind of like focus on but not everybody takes those subjects okay so i focused on in my uh, final year on medicinal plants and on kind of like research paper reading like extensive research understanding and because I thought at one point that I was going to go when I was in pharmacy I thought I was gonna go into product development that was kind of my idea I wanted to develop products for especially beauty industry hello <laughs> it's so crazy to think about that yeah anyway so I did this whole semester of taking a subject that focuses on how to understand better clinical researches and in general studies so I I'm gonna take my time to have a look at like all the studies about rosemary oil related to hair growth or in general like what it does, how it does and all of that good stuff so then maybe I can kind of like see if I can learn something out of it but for now I can tell you that for me what really works is castor oil. I am actually due a haircut, that's another thing that I have to tell you. As you can see my hands are a little bit thinner and that's for me a good giveaway that I need like to cut this off but the truth is that in Milan I haven't actually found yet a great hairdresser so i'm hoping that when i go to london i'll be able or paris i'll be able to cut a little bit of the ends why that is important is because it's kind of like flowers if you have like dead flowers in a vase no matter how much water you put or how many nutrients you can put in the water or soil if it's feeding the dead flowers the healthy flowers are not getting enough nutrients and the dead are too dead to be like revived so it's the same with the dead hair ends like you need to cut them off so that your hair can actually get hair all the care that it needs and not hair which is anyway dead and not able to be revived when it comes to um, hair growth so it all comes down to the good care internal and external using the tools that are not overheating your hair that are not burning it that are not causing damage to the hair like i said i use dyson i've used it for many years and despite being obviously the dyson ambassador even if i wouldn't be I would always use Dyson for my hair just because I find it gives the best shine to it and it keeps it healthiest. I feel like my hair has been, it's the healthiest and the longest it's probably ever been. Despite the fact that I color it more than ever, I know that like color is another thing. I used to have that black hair. Many of you remember I'll insert pictures because I was like, I don't want to color my hair anymore. My hair is dry. Naturally, we've discussed this at the beginning and you shouldn't really color or bleach dry hair. That's where... I think it comes down again to someone who really knows how to color hair. I'm very grateful to my colorist, Louis Remy on Instagram. I'll insert here for you guys who are Paris based or not. You can DM him and ask him for coloring. They're really the best. They're like two guys that do probably like a lot of people in the fashion industry, a lot of people that kind of like, you know, do this style of hair, but also they're really good at doing blondes. So that could help in case you want to color your hair. I strongly recommend them because he really knows how to get the most out of my hair. As you can see, we treat my hair like on top, but if I divide this and I show you the bottom, my hair is completely different color here because he doesn't want to kind of 
overdo anything it's like really really good at achieving the results also that i want okay so someone's asked me how often do i get a blowout i don't i wouldn't say i get too often a blowout but one thing that is for sure is that like when i'm traveling or when i'm at fashion week or when i'm doing stuff i'm not really that often doing my hair myself i do go for a blowout but i love the most when i do my own hair with dyson because i think like it doesn't look too much like one thing that i always say when i go to a hairdresser is like if i want to wave i don't want to look like a reality star i want to look more like very natural that's very important to me and it's quite hard to achieve that when someone else is doing it and with dyson it's like so easy to get that what can i do if my hair is light and what shampoo do you use i think like all over my instagram you can see which kind of shampoo i use i love like the kerastase the one that i shown you the chrome for shine i love sometimes i use like a purple shampoo i like the one from kerastase or i like the one from olaplex when it comes to the purple mask i love using the christophe robin one for blonde hair not for brunette because it actually darkens my hair a little bit like dulls the blonde parts so yeah i like to use the one for blonde uh, hair because it like gets orangeness away i will link all the products that i mentioned in the description box below i love my kerastase oil i also like the shuemura oil the art of hair it's incredible both of those are really 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 good hair oils what do you ask for when you get it colored nothing because i go to the best of the best of the best hairdressers who literally knows exactly what my hair needs what my face needs how to bring light he knows when he needs to go a little bit darker when he needs to go a little bit lighter where to put the lights is just i don't need to speak like we speak about other stuff when we're getting my hair done i have no idea what he's doing because every time i leave i know i'm very very happy so the nature of my hair is curly coarse the hair strand when you touch it it's not smooth it's quite like zigzaggy in a way I, i'm not sure how to explain it it's a thick hair strand but the hair itself like there's a lot of it but i mean it's quite heavy so it's quite difficult also to style and to maintain the look best hair protection i do think there's like lots of great protection like either it's a 10 i use the kerastase clement thermique something like that it's called or i also like the gizu spray that is for uh, heat protection that is really good as well someone's asked me if i lost hair a few years ago when i was on diet i've never actually lost hair besides once at university in my second year so second year of university and pharmacy is known to be like very difficult year apparently one in three people fail i've never failed anything in my life before never failed an exam in my life before so it was big 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 stress for me because i just i i I don't know i was just stressed i lost hair behind the ear i lost the patch of hair because of stress and whenever i'm like extremely stressed i would lose like a few strands there but the truth is that it's been a very long time since i lost any hair so not in the pandemic not when i lost weight how many years ago now like three four years ago so yeah of course the question how to do waves like this on dyson or how do you make your waves you guys have seen that there was a whole little section so i hope you enjoyed that i hope that answered most of these questions oh there's one more that i think is quite important for me to answer it's like how often do you wash your hair not that often i would say i wash my hair once or twice a week because i like i said i have naturally dry hair i wouldn't even have to wash it twice a week because it does not get dirty or greasy but i wash it because i want to restyle it and because yeah it's actually very good not to wash your hair too often because you once you wash it you're or like rinsing out all the good nourishing oils that your follicles are producing anyway to feed the strands so if your hair does get oily quite a lot try and oil train your hair there's like so much on the internet about that i've never had to do that because like i said i have naturally quite dry hair so it's not my story and i don't want to give advice on something that is not my story but it's something that i think is quite important and another question that i think is quite important how often do you retouch your highlights i probably do my hair February, September, maybe like I do it three, maximum four times a year, not more than that. So I call my hair three to four times a year. That's the honest truth. And for the reference as well, in case you need to know, I've never actually been like platinum blonde, very blonde. I never had like a drastic color change. This is probably the lightest I've ever been, I'd say. I never had extensions like hair extensions you know the ones that you go to hair salon to put it on i had the kind of like clip in for a look and then you remove them immediately so yeah that is it about the hair so bottom line is i hope you guys made some notes 
I hope I'm gonna hear and get messages from many of you who are gonna tell me that, that you now massage your scalp, that you give yourself like nice amount of time to wash your hair, that you don't just do it like on a whim very fast and that's it, that you take the right supplements, that you make sure that you have like a good diet, but then when you're on the go, that you do help by kind of adding all the necessary bits to it, that you are treating your hair in the right way and that you are using the products that, the tools that will style your hair so that it can look beautiful but not over treat it or damage it because I think it's extremely important. I hope you enjoyed it, I hope you answered some of your questions and with that I will finish this video. Thank you so much everybody who's watched it, thank you to Dyson for sponsoring this video and I'll see you in my next one. Bye guys!